Hello everyone. This is a special video I'm doing quickly without my normal sort of theme song uh, intro thing because I'm really keen to get it out today, Tag Tuesday, and it's my second attempt at an original tag. So this is my original tag. I did one a little while back which was called Personal Treasures Tag. And I really appreciate MJ from Reading This Life did that tag, which is really cool. I think she was the only one. But if anyone wants to look at that, uh, it was Personal Treasures Tag. It was quite an interesting one about just what books mean something special to you personally. But in the meantime, I've come up with this other one that I think is a really nice idea. And it's all about authors. And uh, if anyone wants to do this, that's cool. I'm going to tag a few people at the end anyway. But if anyone wants to do this, that'd be cool. I'm kind of jumping off a video I was just watching, actually, from Reading This Life where MJ was talking about Neil Gaiman, and I was thinking about the fact that I'd met him, and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool to do a, an author tag about the celebrity? <laughs> the celebrity of the author. I don't want to edit this, so I'm going to try and crack on without me suddenly going... Um, so, uh, celebrity of authors tag. So, it's going to be six prompts, and I've got some books to illustrate... The people so it's a bit more bookish but uh yeah i think this would be fun to do so first question first prompt have you met an author that you liked so i've always liked neil gaiman stuff and i did get to meet him so i'm holding this book up while i'm talking about neil gaiman because this is one of my oldest possessions it's a book i love loads and i've mentioned it a few times in my videos i think in my non-fiction video i ended with it and uh, a few other bits i think my personal treasures tag i mentioned it as well but I just love this book so much. And when I met Neil Gaiman, he was bowled over when I told him I had this. He couldn't believe it. And uh, we were chatting about it for a bit. And uh, I'll just tell you how I met him. So basically, when the book Ocean at the End of the Lane came out, he did a talk at the Guild Hall in Portsmouth at the City Centre. Um, so that was awesome. That was in the evening. But before that, in the afternoon, he came down to the seafront and he cut the ribbon for a new street that they were calling the ocean at the end of the lane. So there's a very small walkway that's not really a street, it's just a walkway and uh, oh, a lane. I see what they did there. It's a little lane called the ocean at the end of the lane. And it's literally because it faces the beach. So it is, there. there it is, the Solent. The ocean is there. So he cut the ribbon on that and it was a really cool little thing. He did a little speech. And it's quite cool that we got a, little lane that's, that's named after one of his books. And then in the evening he did this talk and he read from The Ocean at the End of the Lane and he read from Fortunately the Milk, I think it's called, uh, which he released around the same time. And he's really good at reading his own stuff. But he also seems just really, really nice. He just seems like a really nice guy. I've seen loads of interviews with him. He was lovely on that night. And he just seems like, what a nice guy, Neil Gaiman. So, so yeah, that was really awesome meeting him. And... Uh, if you guys, if, if you're doing this tag and you've met someone, it'd be really cool to find out your experience and what it was like. So that's my answer to number one. Number two, do you seek out signed copies of books? So I personally don't seek them out. I don't order them specially. When I have an opportunity to go to Forbidden Planet, which I love Forbidden Planet, when I go in there, it's a very special place to me. Uh, dating back to when I was a kid and, and London was like an amazing place to me anyway and then they start springing up loads of other places but I love Forbidden Planet and I often see author author signed copies there and basically I won't pay more for it but sometimes it'll give me an extra nudge to get something if I'm choosing between books that's the only way that signed copies have that influence but other than that I'm not that bothered really um it's nice if it's a signed copy because you're going to meet them. You get, they're going to sign it in front of you. I think that's quite cool because I know that um, I, I had a very quick, like, I don't know, 30-second conversation with John Delancey when he brought out a, um, a book, a hardback book about Q. Um, that was in Volume 1 Bookshop. Does any, anyone remember Volume 1 Bookshop? A big yellow bookstore. Um, anyway, uh, so I don't, I don't seek them out. But I have got a few that I found just because they were still on the shelves from when someone had done a signing in a shop. Uh, question number three. Are you interested in authors' personalities or lifestyles or opinions? I am. I am definitely interested. And I like it when 
I find out that there's an author that shares my opinions or has a similar worldview to me, but I don't let it affect, or I try not to let it affect how I like their books, and I don't think it affects how much I seek out their books. So there are obviously people that have, um, are famously uh, a little bit dodgy, like H.P. Lovecraft, and if, if and when I read H.P. Lovecraft, I don't think about that when I'm reading it, but obviously if it's in the text, it's different. I mean, uh, apparently, I haven't heard it myself, but apparently Orson Scott Card has, has said some homophobic stuff, so clearly I'm not going to like that, but I am going to read Ender's Game, and I'm assuming it's not in the text of the book, otherwise I would have imagined it wouldn't be so loved. So I try not to make that steer what I read, because I want to read Ender's Game, but I do like it if the opposite happens, and, and, I've, and I figure out, or find out, discover that someone has a similar worldview, because it's quite nice. Um, sometimes it's not that surprising, so sometimes it's in the text. So, for example, you couldn't read Becky Chambers stuff without realising or without imagining that she's quite a liberal person um, because it's all in the text. So I think there's things like that happening. But, uh, yeah, I, I, do, I am interested in their opinions and their personalities and their lifestyles, but I don't, you know, lifestyles, that word could mean all sorts of things. I don't care if they play golf or not. But, um, yeah, I do have an interest in what they're like as a person to some extent, but I try not to make it steer my reading so much. Question number four, is there an author that you love that you think you wouldn't like personally? So this is another thing that prompted me to do this video because I, as you may have seen from some of my other videos, I'm a massive, massive fan of Harlan Ellison. And Harlan Ellison is famously quite a complex character. And he seems to when he was around he's not around anymore sadly but when he was around he seemed to revel in in being outrageous and and upsetting people and he had this reputation of being quite hard-nosed and he was quite aggressive in meetings with tv executives if they messed around with his script he, he was quite funny about it you know in a big way but i would say that people like neil gaiman and some other people that knew him personally said he was really lovely so i think that he played on that reputation and liked that reputation so I do think there's a bit of that going on. And like publicly, he liked to be outrageous and, and like offend people and stuff like that. But I think apparently, personally, he was a nice guy. But even though that might be the case, and I'd like to think that's the case anyway, but if that was the case, one of the things I dislike the most in people and in the world is arrogance. And I think he was pretty arrogant. So even if he was not as bad as everybody said, he was definitely arrogant and I don't like arrogance. So uh, so even though I love his books and I'm gonna I'm I'm setting up at least two videos on Han Ellison um, for the new year probably. I do love his books. I really love his books. I've got a massive pile of stuff I'm going through at the minute of his. I don't think I'd like him personally. So there we go. That's my answer to number four. Number five, is there an author now dead, that you would have liked to have met? So I've got two answers for this. And uh, quite different people, I'd say. And quite different reasons as well. So my first choice is Ursula K. Le Guin. Another author that I collect her stuff. I've got a few books. But I think I've got one, two, three, four. About nine books of hers. And uh, I really love her stuff. And I'd just like to meet her. I would have liked to have met her just to chat with her. She seems really chilled. I've seen interviews with her. She seems like a really interesting, intelligent, and fascinating woman. I'd love to have chatted with her and uh, and asked her about, um, not just about science fiction, but about her opinions about the world. Because she's got, she's got a lot of social commentary in her books. She's got a lot of um, insight in her books. And it'd be just nice to sort of see that taken away from the narrative and just chatting about those kind of things. I think that'd be really cool. So Ursula K. Le Guin is one of my options. And by the way, if anyone's watching this that have never read any Ursula K. Le Guin, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. Um, I have done a video on her, actually, so you can check that out if you fancy it. And then the other one, the big one, the one I'd love to have met, um, H.G. Wells. H.G. Wells. Um, yeah, I mean, he must have been just such an amazing man. 
I'm picking this book up, by the way, because I think it's quite cool that it's not a science fiction book and he wrote other things besides science fiction, even though he's clearly one of the pioneers of science fiction and hugely important, so important. And I love everything I've read by him. I really love what he writes. I really like the other things I know about him. I love the fact that he was, he was a committed socialist who had a really clear idea about his own uh, sort of his own sense of of what humanity's like and how we could make the world a better place and those kind of things. I love those kind of people, and he was a very optimistic person and uh, very driven person. And I just like to have met him. I think I think it would have been really cool. So H.G. Wells, fascinating guy. That is definitely my other answer for a dead author I would have liked to have met. And then the last question, before I tag people, is a living, a living, there's no TH, a living author that you would like to meet. So I'm choosing two people here that are very living, they're very prolific, they're all writing, they're bringing things up all the time or writing things to come out soon. And uh, two of my favourite authors, what, yeah, easily, my go-to authors, which is another video I've done which is coming up soon. And John Scalzi. John Scalzi is my first choice. And, uh, and actually, I have done an author profile video that's coming out. I've scheduled so much stuff on this thing. Anyway, John Scalzi. Uh, he seems to be a really nice guy. And I've watched interviews with him. Um, I read his Twitter feed. And uh, I think it'd be really cool to meet him and have a little chat. He seems really, really uh, interesting guy. So John Scalzi is my choice, my first choice. My second one's the big one. My first choice for who I'd like to meet who's still around. And then the big one for me, I absolutely love what she does. She's definitely one of my favourite authors. Definitely, easily. I love what she does. I've just done a, a video just about her. I've recently saw, saw a, a fairly long, expansive, really interesting, entertaining video where Moid from Media Death Cult interviewed her. It was so brilliant. One of the best videos I've seen, hands down. Regard And it was quite funny because he'd only read one of her books at the time, but he still managed to get a fantastic interview out of it. And she was really gracious, gracious and brilliant about the whole thing. And, uh, you know, clearly he wasn't doing the interview as an Uber fan and she was just like, she just thought it was great. And she just seems like really cool. So I'm talking about Claire North. So Claire North, Definitely one of my favourite authors, and uh, I'd love to, to meet her and, and shake her hand and say thank you for the words or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I do quite like meeting... I've met a few um, bands or musicians that I've really liked as well in, over time, and, you know, I had a qu quick handshake with Aladdin Wainwright in the third, and, you know, just... just and, and I've sh had very quick chats to the Bernicke ladies, and stuff like that is really cool. Uh, I had a long chat with Richie Havens, actually. That was amazing. Um, so, you know, I do think there's a nice thing about the celebrity thing. So I'd love to meet Claire North one day if that ever happened, if, if that ever was possible. So that's my other response to living author that I would like to meet. So, uh, quite a specific thing. I haven't seen a tag like this before, but it could be that I haven't looked hard enough. But I'm going to tag four people in this video. But if anyone wants to do this, any of the regular people that watch these videos that will think, I'm going to do this. That'd be cool. I'd love to see your answers. So the first person I'm going to tag is Brian from Bookish. So Bookish is a fantastic channel where he takes a sideways look at some stuff and uh, always fascinating to watch. So Brian from Bookish. Uh, Dave and Olive from Book Blather. Another really great thought-provoking channel. So Dave and Olive, um, if you'd like to do this tag, that'd be awesome. Uh, Russell from Ink and Paper Blog. So... I, I, I think Russell does do the occasional tag. I don't know how many he does. If you like this idea, Russell, it'd be cool to see it. I think your videos are amazing. And uh, uh, if you don't know his stuff, um, he, 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 write, he, he does um, videos of a lot of literary fiction. So he looks at Booker Prize nominees and that sort of stuff. But his um, approach and his analysis is always interesting. So Russell from Ink and Paper Blog. And then the last one, um, again, I don't know how many tags he does, but I think his channel is so brilliant. Really funny, really entertaining, really... Um, 
what's the word? Well, thought provoking. Really looks into the books in a really good way. Like quite deep, deep, detailed reviews of books. Uh, he's a professional actor, and uh, that comes into play partly because the entertaining way he delivers the videos. Um, it literally makes me laugh out loud sometimes. But also, it comes into play with some of the things he chooses to read as well. So this is um, Do Mantidote is his name. So I don't know if you've seen the Do Mantidote channel, but he's really good. So I'm tagging those four people. And anyone else that wants to do it, the cult of celebrity tag. How cool are authors? Hmm?